contents of our mind, so everything that we experience, our thoughts, emotions and sensations, can either be a source of incredible torment and suffering, or they can be the place where we find our empowerment and clarity. And it's really just a question of how we choose to use our mind or our intelligence. And um, the way that most of us are trained is to focus in on the descriptions. And in the balance view training we just, just simplify everything and we call all of the descriptions, anything you can perceive or describe or experience, just data. So that keeps it really simple. Um, and um, I was very adept at focusing in on the descriptions and trying to make sense of everything um, through looking at the descriptions and trying to make sense of them based on comparing them with other descriptions. Um, so for example, um, if I had a sense of guilt or regret about something, then I focus in on those descriptions and I begin to analyse them. And the first thing that's obvious when I begin to look into guilt and regret, or seem to be obvious, is that I shouldn't feel guilt or regret. Guilt or regret was a sign of there being something wrong, that I'd done something wrong. Um, and what's interesting when uh, we come to the Balance View training is that we're introduced to just a different way that we can use our mind or our intelligence. And um, it was so different, it was so radical, it was so um, contrary to everything that I'd learned um, that at the beginning it, it seemed quite challenging. And I tried to approach it in the way that I'd approached learning everything in my life by thinking about it. But actually what we're given this invitation and suggestion that we can try for ourselves is well, what happens when you just rest naturally stop describing everything and allow your mind to just be in its native open condition. And um, yeah, it, it was so funny to come to that and have that suggestion and then immediately think about, well, why do I need to do that? Or how's that going to look? Or, and, and actually, that's not the practice. The practice is to, whenever you naturally remember, just to stop the describing of everything that's going on and recognize the bright openness of your mind as it already is, as it always is. And um, this was so challenging for me. It was so, it seemed so difficult because I was so used to going into the descriptions. But fortunately, there was a, 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 just a really practical way that I could test this out, and this was through short moments. So just taking an instant to stop the describing and recognize the alertness, the cognizance, the power to know that was always at the basis of, wh of whatever I was experiencing. And if you just stop thinking for a moment and you notice what remains, there's something about you that doesn't go anywhere. There's an openness, there's the capacity to know. And so this is open intelligence. This is the openness of your intelligence that allows you to experience this continual stream of data, this flow of experience. And so in this simple practice, all we're doing is shifting the focus and the emphasis away from only the descriptions about what's going on to recognizing that these descriptions are based in and are inseparable from this vast openness of mind. And the reason that this is important is because this is the difference between the contents of our mind being a source of torment and suffering to the contents of our mind being the source of our empowerment and clarity. And torment and suffering is probably something that um, most of us don't need explaining. I know that even when life didn't seem like it was incredibly um, unpleasant, it was always a struggle. I always felt like I was struggling with everything. There was always something to do, there was something to work out, something to attain. There was some future goal and if I got there, then everything would be okay. The problem was, with this was that it was always just out of reach. Just, I, I just needed something, I needed um, just a little bit more money. I, I needed just a slightly better intimate partner. I needed to have even better physical health. 
or I needed to be not be sick. I needed to eat slightly better food. I needed to be in a slightly better place. It was just, just all, it was tantalizingly close, but never, I couldn't quite get there. And I worked really hard. I tried really hard and I talked about it and I studied it and thought about it. But none of those processes allowed me to uh, reach this goal where I could just be totally comfortable with where I was. And so when we come to the Balanced View training and we're introduced to the nature of mind, just to recognize this bright, open alertness that is at the basis of our experience, then it's very natural that this, um, this habit of trying to attain something or to get somewhere again kicks in. And so there can be this sense of um, frustration when we have this recognition, we recognize this bright openness of mind, and yet it slips away again. The old habit of falling into the descriptions of whatever they are just is something that we've been used to doing for so long. But I know for myself it was like, oh, I, you know, I had it, I had it, you know, everything was clear, I could recognize the openness of mind, and, oh, but, you know, I, I, I I said this thing, or I did this thing, and oh, I, I forgot to take a short moment. And, and again, this is just an old habitual way of using our mind. And the great news about training up in open intelligence and the nature of mind is, is that we always get a second chance. So at some point in that story, in some point in that flow of descriptions, we will recognize what's going on will recognize the way that we're using our mind to only focus in on the descriptions rather than recognizing them as being inseparable from this vast openness of mind, like um, the breeze is inseparable from the air. And the breeze is the dynamic energy of the air. And at some point we recognize what's actually going on, the way that we're choosing to use our mind. And the support in this recognition is the balanced view training. My training previously in the way to use my mind was so ingrained that sometimes even one short moment, one instant of this instinctive recognition of the openness of mind just seemed impossible because the descriptions were so compelling. I was so used to following after them. So I needed more support, I needed more reminders. And so that's what you'll find in the Balanced View training. Media that unerringly um, reminds us that we can relax and allow everything to be as it is, just for a short moment. Spending time with other people who are committed to this practice to allow their mind to open naturally, rather than trying to fit it in and corral it into these really outdated descriptions about what everything means and about the way we need to deal with our experience and our flow of data. And then there are trainers that you can ask questions to who will simply share their experience of going through something very similar. And so there's this comprehensive support mechanism and when that's coupled with the written trainings where we can really go into the, um, the details of what it means first of all to emphasize our data and the way that that creates this confusion and suffering and then to be empowered to see that we have the choice as to now how we use our minds. And some people actively take short moments and some people never consciously take a short moment. All they do is immerse themselves in the training. And whether it seems like it's happening quickly or slowly, whether it seems like you're always in open intelligence or not in open intelligence, all of these descriptions just settle out. And what I began to see is that open intelligence was always on, had always been on, and will always be on. And all that was happening was that my assurance in that was increasing and increasing. And that happened through immersing myself in the training. Less and less did I believe the stories about anything, including my progress in recognizing the nature of mind. The thought or the um, sense of I've now dropped out of open intelligence, I'm no longer recognizing open intelligence, I regret not taking a short moment, 
all of these are the superfactual evidence of the natural presence of open intelligence. You would not have any of these thoughts without open intelligence. None of these thoughts can be found to be separate or apart from open intelligence. So open intelligence pervades all data, all perceptions, all experience, all descriptions. So to train the mind to allow everything to be exactly as it is. And to discover that this is our innate capacity. The mind is naturally wide open and clear. And all we need to do is just allow it to be this open, clear, bright space, inclusive of all data. And so there is nothing that can be um, found to have this independent existence or nature. And that would include all of the atoms in the universe. That would include all descriptions about the nature of reality. And you can discover whether that's true or not for yourself through this practice of short moments. Seeing for yourself, is any description, can any data stream be found to have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence? And having an intellectual understanding is great, but to have the instinctive recognition in the direct encounter with that thought, with that emotion, with that sensation, that's where the juice really is. Because there, this is the instinctive recognition of the crucial juncture of open intelligence and data. And this is where we discover this empowerment and clarity of knowing what to do and what to say in each time, place and circumstance. And this is the power we all have natural access to as humans. This is the power of our intelligence.